Hi, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, a daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here I come. In three, two, one. Bang! Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. You are now about to witness the greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the multiverse. Bang! Greatest dag on show the dag on multiverse. We have a great show for you today. Bang! All right, everybody. Look, look. All right, a lot of onboarding is going on lately, so I probably are gonna have a couple shows. Because I already have another show's worth of shit right now. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna do it yesterday, but a friend of ours, one of the sisters, uh, she had a a death in the family, and so as I I thought it would be inappropriate to be look looking and banging on Sunday. So I, I held it to today. So and this and I want to say this. This show is dedicated to our sister, Sunny B. Spy Lady. This show's dedicated to you, lady. Bang. Love you. Oh, she came and visited me, man. We had dinner together, so it kind of hurts even more. It's not like just some lady I don't know from the internet. We came and broke bread together, so. Fuck, yeah, it's, it kind of hurts, I guess, maybe a little more than if I didn't, if I never met her, but. So this is dedicated to you, Brenda. Love you, lady. Take your time. Heal up. Come back and kick some ass with us. All right. Okay, so today's show, let's get to it. IOTA and Dell Computers. What I tell you, Fortune 500s. Fortune 500 onboardings to promote carbon tracking. You know this carbon thing is huge worldwide. So we're going to talk about that. Oh, yeah. And then the Brazilians, they're going to unleash their fund masters. Brazilian funds can invest in crypto now. Told you. I told you. We're going to talk about funds. We're going to talk about what your market really is. Yes. Funds. We'll talk about it for you new people. You old cats, you already know. And then Indonesia. <laughs> I told you guys. I told you. We're going to talk a lot. We're going to yap yap a lot when we get there. So I don't want to. I'm excited right now. I want to talk already. But just wait till we get there. It's the appropriate time. Indonesia is going to make a national crypto exchange. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Fuck this Binance. Fuck Coinbase. Fuck all these little weirdos. Fucking FTX. Fuck up your shit. Make a government funded fucking national fucking exchange, you motherfuckers. Like the NASDAQ. Well, they're not government funded, but they're semi, they're quasi governmental. NASDAQ and the Dow. Yeah, national. Ain't no rug pulls going on there. You don't have to worry about. The chairman of the NASDAQ fucking taking client money <laughs> and giving it to his quant girlfriend, right? National exchange. So this is great news, great news, great news for the Indonesians. And then we're going to do the shout outs and the daily summary as per usual. So let's begin how we begin with a bong. Let me head on over here. We do a, <laughs> we do a little bit of hook. <laughs> bong. Let me do a bit hook. <laughs> refresh, refresh. All right, look at us, above 17,000. Aren't we the rich kids now? <laughs> All right, hold on. Got to get that last card here. All right, here we go. All right, Bitcoin, price of Bitcoin is $17,187. And when I left you last time, we're at $16,601. We have gone up. Yes, and you can expect this for the rest of, for a long while. Oh, we're going to talk about China right now in a second, too. So hold on. Settle down. Look, settle down, Miss Grins. We got to talk. So we've gone up $586. All right. So let's talk a little bit of macroeconomics. Look, look. So I told you guys, you know, China, they opened up. So obviously, and we've talked about it before, the Chinese COVID thing sucks. But Xi Jinping refuses to take the Western uh, Moderna, Pfizer, um, what's that other one? Johnson and Johnson, right? Which are ninety five percent effective. He need he wants to stay with the Sinovac, which is the Chinese made one, which is only sixty five percent effective. So look, that's been fucking up our supply chains for a couple of years now, and so finally the people of China protested and said, "We're fucking sick of it. Let us go." <laughs> so China opened up right about three weeks ago, right? Wasn't it? Right, mid December there. 
Uh, and so, and like I told you, look, these guys are going to get slaughtered. Uh, I should settle down with the slaughter word, but just there's going to be mass infections in China because their vaccine does not work very well. All right, only 65% effective, okay? So, and so it's been happening. And so in the middle of December, they got the first wave, right? That's when they opened up the markets. Well, well not the market, but society. They're a fucking country, never mind just the markets. And so a lot of people have been getting infected. Well, apparently, and so I told you, I said, guys, listen, because I wanted to prepare your minds mentally, not to get fudded and fucked up. I wanted to prepare you mentally. I told you, look, January and February, guys, yeah, we're just going to hear a shit show coming out of China. March, we'll start seeing good. And then April, beginning of Q2, all right, we should start seeing some sunshine at the end of the tunnel. Well, apparently, I was a little bit too pessimistic. Apparently, uh, in China, oh, oh, I'll show you. Oh, actually, fuck this. I'll just prove it to you instead of just talking. All right, so I'll tell you about it, and then I'm going to show you. So apparently, in China already... They peaked in the middle of December. <laughs> when they first opened up, rawr, COVID hit them hard, right? It ate everybody up. The numbers are already beginning to decline. Now, as you know, and if you don't know, let me tell you, obviously China is the major world's supply chain hub, right? They're a manufacturing economy, right? They, when you get your Bluetooth speaker, well, it comes from China. When you get your iPhone, it comes from China. When you get your fucking car, it might be an American-made car or a, you know, Volkswagen, a German car. Yeah, there ain't nothing German about it. That shit's made in China. There's nothing American about your Ford F-150, good American truck. No, that shit's made in China. The first American to touch their car, to touch that car, is you when you buy it. <laughs> okay, so, but anyway, though, supply chains, right, coming out of China. Well, now that the people are getting all back to work and stuff, back into the factories... We're going to have a nice supply chain. Uh, well, I uh, well, I've already told you this. We're going to have a, you know, the supply chains are going to open up, which will give us the goods we need to get rid of this supply side inflation that we're under. Right? The supply side inflation. You're not paying more because your dollar went down. You're not paying more because your euro went down. You're not paying more because your British pound or your American do- or your Canadian dollar or your Australian dollar or your Japanese yen went down. No, the price of the goods went up because there's less of them. Well, now that China's coming on board again, well, there'll be more. So the prices will go down. So this is great news, great news, great news for all of us. And, and let me show you to you, so now, let me show it to you. So this is what's going on in China, right? 90% of the people were already infected. Yeah, so you only gotta infect the other 10%, and then you get herd, herd immunity, right? And so let's check it out. Let's check it out what, these, what, the, what the Chinese guys are saying, all right? Life is moving forward again, the official newspaper of the Communist Party says. We're we're preventing severe disease. Ah, wait, wait, what else are we going to show you here? So here's a guy, he says, man, it's just such a huge relief to be able to go back to normal. Just come back to China, get off the plane, get myself a taxi, and just go the fuck home. He didn't say the fuck, but you know that's what he meant. (laughs) Right, so... Things are getting back to normal in China. Like, hold on, let me let me show you. South Korea, direct flights from South Korea are now opening up. And actually, they were sold out. Uh, so anyway, so China is opening back up again, right? Like, and I thought it would take a couple months for them to go through... Um, the infection process, right? To let everyone get infected, get herd immunity. Those who are too weak are going to die. Unfortunately, that's a humanitarian catastrophe, but um, but uh, ah, uh, China's opening back up. Uh, remember this, when the young people get it, they get sick for a few days, okay, and then they're back to work, right? So that's what's happening in China. So I guess what I'm saying is, guys, I think I think we're going to open up maybe sooner. I'm keeping my, honestly, I'm going to just keep my projections at March, right? Till we're clear and free March, mid-April, into Q1, into Q, beginning of Q2. But those are good. That's good data. 
Um, what else is going on on macro? Um, well, not really anything. I mean, that's it. We're raising interest rates. And that's the other thing. When China comes online, well, inflation is going to come down naturally because we are in a goods inflation, meaning there's less goods. Yeah, well, once China comes online, there's going to be more goods. So prices are going to go down naturally, which means the Fed Reserve isn't going to have to raise rates so violently <laughs> like they have been fucking 75 basis points, 50 basis points. Yeah, we'll be raising interest rates like normal. Fucking 10 basis points, 5 basis points. 15 if we're feeling a little rowdy. <laughs> you know, 75? That's violence in the... <laughs> yeah, that you, you don't understand. I mean, if you, you, you know, if you don't understand the power. What we've been going through with the Federal Reserve is a violent beatdown of the markets. Stop buying, right, to get inflation down. Yet that's not normal, right? The Federal Reserve doesn't raise 75 basis points ever. Month after month after month in a row even, like, fuck one time, even month after month. This has been a very violent, a very aggressive uh, process that the uh, Federal Reserve, well, not just us, the ECB, the Brits, uh, you know, any major, all the major players, uh, violent to get the inflation down. And as you can see, it's working. CPI numbers, consumer price index, that's your inflation numbers, have gone down and they're just going steadily down. Due to our central banks taking the wise choice and jacking those uh, interest rates month after month. It's not even this, they did it once. Month after, I think, the Fed Reserve, we been, we did this, what, five months in a row already, right? 75 basis point. <laughs> yeah, but it's working, and so that's what's great, right? Yeah, we just want it to work and get back to normal, and so everything's working out, guys. And like I said, when China comes on board, well, all those goods that are sitting on the Chinese ports, all those iPhones that are sitting there, they can't get shipped. All those Teslas that are sitting there, they can't get shipped. All those Bluetooth speakers sitting there, they can't get shipped because the workers are all locked down. Well, now they're going to get back to fucking work. They're going to load that shit on the, on, the, uh, on the boats, on the big, you know, the big tanker boats. And fucking, we're finally going to get our goods, which will flood our markets, and prices are going to come down even more. All right, so good news for us. It's a great start to the year, guys. All right, so now let's get back to, so is there anything else? That's it. Like, we're done. I told you guys, the Ukraine war thing, not a problem anymore. The wheat's coming out of Ukraine. The wheat and the barley, so no food crises in Africa or, or, the, or the Middle East or, or, or uh, Asia. Um, what else did we have? We had the food. Or no, sorry, we had the war, which was caused the food. Right, the China, which was going on. Oh, yeah, and then, like I said, and then interest rates. And if China comes back online... We'll just be raising eventually by 10 basis points and shit like that. All right, let's just move on to how we go. So I guess what I'm saying is be happy, guys, and accumulate, accumulate, accumulate now. Well, you can. You see the prices are already inching up. Oh, yeah, the monsters are already sniffing around. They know what I know. Or maybe I should say it. I know what they know. Inflation doesn't last forever. Uh, winding down of QE doesn't last forever. Eventually, it's going to end. And, well... You want to be positioned. It's called market positioning, right? That's what I try to teach you here. That's what I try to make you do. Not make you do. That's what I encourage you to do is to position yourself in the market so that when, as I've told you before, there's a, and if you're new to this channel, there is a tsunami of money that's coming to space, to this space, once countries regulate, and Europe just did, and we're going to talk about Europe. No, we're going to talk about Europe, but not right now, but. And that brings the tsunami of money. Where the, where's the tsunami of money coming from, Shamari? From banksters, from hedge funds, from family offices, and just rich motherfuckers in general who want to buy in. Okay? That's where it's coming from. Well, why isn't it here yet? How come we don't have them here yet? Because they're not allowed. They're not allowed. A hedge fund is not allowed to put their client's money in Ethereum. Well, well that's not true. Sorry. Ethereum and Bitcoin, they can't. But... Because uh, at least here in America, because those are the only two regulated. But for instance, they cannot put their client American now, can't put their money in Cardano. 
And I'm saying American now because the Europeans can. Right, that's the difference. The Europeans can put their clients' money in Cardano now. <laughs> As of fucking what? Eight days ago. Right? Here in America, though, our, our hedge fund bosses aren't allowed to do that. Right? Because it's an unregulated asset here in America. They are not allowed to purchase unregulated assets on their client's behalf. You go to jail for shit like that, right? Like, that's just... Yeah. Well, plus they all use Bloomberg terminals, and so it's not on a Bloomberg terminal yet, so they wouldn't even be able to buy it, you know? So, but anyway, so everything's going right. Okay, let's just go. Let's just start. Let's just do how we normally do. Top 10 of the day, brothers and sisters. You know who they are. The usual suspects. Usual band of miscreants. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, USD coin, BNB, XRP, Binance, USD, Cardano, Dogecoin, and... Polygon holding on the number 10. Let's look at move, look. Excuse me. Let's look at market moves of the day. Single digits up to single digits down. Look at Cardano, man. 24% up on the week. Bang. All right. Single digits up, single digits down. What's this? Oh, Solana. Oh, 60. Oh, 43% on the week. 17%. How do they do that? I like. I, I don't tell people what to do with their money, but to me, Solana seems like a shit show. It seems like every few months I'm hearing of a, a new hack, a new problem, a new this. But whatever, the market has spoken. Well, the market has spoken. All right, single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Ooh, who's this? Bit DAO. 8.49% up. Single this up, single this down. Single this up. Who's this? Flow. 8.42%. Single this up, single this down. All right. Let's see who made money today. If you see anything here, like, go get it. Or, sorry, sorry. Let's see who lost money today. It's not about made the money. Red candles. You buy red. So let's see who lost money today. If you see anything here, you like, go get it. Because it's on sale. Bye. What we got? Top 10 losers. Lido DAO, Frack Share, Pancake Swap, Ethereum Classic, Shiba Inu, BNB, Phi USD, Una said Leo, OKB, and Pax Dollar. Let's see who made money today. Bang! Holy, oh, there's some gains. All right, top 10 gainers Aptos, Gala, Solana, Curb DAO Token, Filecoin, Zilliqa, Bit DAO, Kava, Cardano, and. Flow holding on the number 10. Let's see what the total market cap is. Yeah, still under a trilly. Still under a trilly. Oops. Oops. Wrong card here. All right. What are we at here? All right. $847.2 billion. When I left you last time, we were at $799.4 billion. We've gone up. That's what we want to see. <laughs> reflected in the prices as we can see so we've gone up what's this uh 50 8 billion dollars 58 billion dollars all right let's look at the 24 hour volume fucking pathetic anyway though better than last time all right you know me volume baby one or 100 100 billion or more yeah, now we're talking. But anyway, we're not even halfway there here. All right, 24-hour uh, volume is $47.1 billion. Well, I left you last time, we're at $22.0 billion. So we've gone up $25.1 billion. All right, let's get to the stories. All right. Look, look. Bang, Iota. Dell promotes Project Alvarium. That tracks carbon footprint in billion dollar market. So you all know that the fiber, or sorry, fiber, <laughs> the carbon, uh, you know there's a whole market in carbon, right? Right, have you ever heard of carbon credits? Right, companies actually pay to pollute. Um, you can buy carbon credits. So if I'm a, let me give you an example. If I'm a coal uh, powered, plant you know I, I i produce energy for some town or whatever with coal well the coal is very uh pollutive what do you call it it's not environmentally friendly right and so you have to pay to pollute that and you so you have to buy carbon credits 
And, you know, that's been going on for a long time. That's, that's not, this is nothing new. But I guess they're going to do it on the blockchain now or something like this. Yeah, but carbon credits, you know, um, especially the European Union, um, well, and China. China doesn't fuck around when it comes to solar power and, 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 and wind energy. They, they're the masters. They fucking, I showed you guys that, that one, that I showed you guys that thing where China has a whole city of just wind turbines and a whole city worth of just solar panels. Yeah. And they haven't even hooked it to their electric grid yet. They're just getting ready to build around it and then they're going to hook it up. Right? China is way ahead when it comes to uh, solar wind and shit like that. The, the What do you call that? Green energy, right? Green energy. China are the masters at that. Here in America, as you know, our politicians are bought and paid for by corporations and so well. <laughs> big oil and big coal here. They control our politicians and so. We're not going to get too much of the solar and stuff yet. All right, but anyway, let's just get on to this. So, under Project Alvarium, Dell and IOTA will work on increasing transparency and real-time tracking of carbon footprints. It will log all the data on the IOTA Tangle, ensuring data integrity and preventing tampering. So they're going to know what, uh, how much pollution um, an enterprise is emitting. So big tech organizations across the world are working seriously on solving the issue relating to carbon footprint. Tech giant Dell Technologies has partnered with IOTA in order to build real-time carbon footprint tracking via a data confidence fabric. Uh, dubbed Project Alvarium, it is an open source project that focuses on enabling trust and data for applications, industry, and businesses. Project Alvarium can serve multiple industries and sectors. It will also create tools for monitoring and verification of critical information. The goal is effective monetization and sharing of data while maintaining high transparency in order to address the global issue of climate change. So if the climate industry is facing some major challenges around greenwashing, including incorrect reporting. So, you know, in the carbon, so I should say that though, in the carbon credit market, well, there's no one uh, monitoring how much carbon this, remember the coal power plant I said? There, there's no one monitoring how much they actually really emit. So they can, we know they're emitting, so they have to buy some carbon credits, but they can emit, say, you know, a million tons of carbon in the air, but only buy 500 million, sorry, sorry, 500,000 carbon credits for 500,000. In other words, they're not paying what they're supposed to. This is going to make sure that there is no, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is going to make sure that these fuckers are not able to greenwash and report incorrectly. In other words, we're going to track how much fucking carbon you're throwing into the air. We're going to make you pay, which is good. So with Project Alvarium, Dell and Iota will present a scalable and open way to collaboratively address climate change while working in coordination with other organizations and regulators. Speaking on development, Steve Todd, fellow at Dell Technology, said, uh, what did he say? He said, the importance of data transparency is integral to how organizations in every industry move forward. Data confidence is needed to manage data at scale, creating systems of trust in this data so users at all levels understand the terms of use. Project Alvarium will create this transparency, and the more companies that integrate it into their processes and systems, the closer we'll come to a future without data ambiguity. In other words, they won't be able to lie. The more, the more, the more companies we put on this thing is the less bullshitting they can do because we're tracking them, right? So understanding how Project Alvarium will work. Well, here it is. Let's see how it'll work. The goal of Project Alvarium is to deliver real-time insights into the carbon footprints contributed by different players. Back in 2019, Dell Technologies introduced its first data confidence fabric. The tech firm later re-engineered this tech using the IOTA Streams framework. 
while providing additional scalability and security. This guarantees data trust. In other words, you can't bullshit the data. You can't change it, right? Like a blockchain, it's immutable. Uh, IOTA uses a thing called a tangle, which is also immutable. So this guarantees data trust, which is quite atten- essential to serve organizations, to several organizations today. So this system will log different steps in the journey of each data point as it travels from an IoT device sensor to a router, further to an edge server, and later to the cloud. As per the industry-specific requirements, each interaction will get a trust rating score in order to ensure data integrity and prevent tampering, prevent any nonsense, any shenanigans, look, prevent tampering. All the scores will be logged on the look, look, iota tangle. Best thing in the world, baby. The tangle blows away these blockchains. Blows them away. Blockchains have scalability issues. Not the tangle. Blockchains have security issues. Not the tangle. <laughs> Blockchain has, what is it? Like only so many transactions a second? Tangle can't even handle as many transactions as you want, fuck stick. Look! So this framework will support the initial integration into hardware and software. It will align with industries that require a high level of compliance or supervision. So like the, the coal power plant I talked about. Yeah, we're going to highly super, we're going to highly uh, supervise that and make sure they're compliant. <laughs> so we're coming to a convergence in technologies, uh, co-founder Schreiner said, Sheener said, uh, in technologies and growth in data utilization. But for that to succeed at scale, we need to be able to trust that data that we're using. Gross. And that's where IOTA comes in. Can't fuck with the tangle, baby. Project Alvarium will also help in lowering the barrier on carbon credit issuance, as well as investments in sustainable technology. So, bang! IOTA hodlers! You know the EU, America, China. Bang! They are all about, well, an ivory country really is trying to reduce their carbon footprints. And so, this is great stuff. This is great stuff. Uh, IOTA hodlers! Bang! All right, let's move on. Bang, funds in Brazil can now invest in crypto. So now, look, funds can now invest in crypto. So as you know, Brazil just came out with their full ship, their full crypto regs the other day, right? Oh, well, now the funds get to come, the fund masters. I want to explain something to you. If you're new to this channel or you, you don't know how markets work or whatever, probably not. <laughs> you're a worker bee. Let me tell you, here's your market, okay? So let's take this. My hand right here, this is the, Na- this is the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones goes up and down every day, right? Up 300, down 300, up 500, down 500, up 700, down 700, right? Yeah, that's a tiny slice of the Dow Jones that is actually being actively traded on a daily basis. This little slice, 25%, right? 25, 50, 75, 100. 25% of your market is what makes the up and the down every day. The rest of your market, this, the meat of it, those are funds. Those are just funds. Yeah, that's how the stock market goes. Only 25% of shit is actually getting actively traded today. The rest of it is held in funds. You know your 401k? Do you know what that is? That's a fund, isn't it? It's a basket of assets. When you got your little job, you got called in the human resources department and they said, hi, Mrs. Susie or Mrs. Johnson. We've got some funds here for you to choose from for your, for your 401k. So if you chose a tech fund, it probably it's a fund, which is a basket of assets, and it has Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, and Google, the fangs, say the fang, the fangs, right? Yeah, that's your 401k. In other words, you ride or die with these boys. By the time you retire, you hope that they go up so much, you've got money to retire with, right? Yeah, that's what the majority of your market is. The day-to-day, that's the sexy little playboy shit. You know, my type shit, traders, you know, guys coming in and out daily, right? Yeah, well, the most of your market is actually just a fat fucker sitting on a billion dollars <laughs> holding your money for you. Funds. And that's what we need in the cryptocurrency market. We don't need these morons out here with their leverage trades on. That ain't making us any money. What we need is our funds to come into this space, buy this crypto, taking them up, putting them in their fund, thus taking them off the market, thus creating scarcity. Right? Scarcity. 
You know, the markets are two things, supply and demand. When there's less of something, it costs more. When there's a lot of something, it costs fuck all. So your Shiba, right? Let's take a look. Let me let me even show you. All right, so your Shiba. Hold on, let's go back over here. Hold on. Uh, one second, one second, guys. All right, so let's take a look. So you all know that there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. Yeah, so there's 17 grand right now. Whereas your Shiba, where's that shit? Where's that Shiba shit? There it is. Yeah, look how many zeros. <laughs> That's why it's so dirt fucking cheap. Because there's so many of them, right? Look at the circulating supply. They can barely fit the fucking number in there. Right? So it's supply and demand. A lot of supply, price is cheap. All right, here it is. Whoops, sorry, 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 sorry. A lot of supply, price is cheap. A little bit of supply, huh. price is strong, right? So that's how markets work, supply and demand. And so what we want are fund managers from all around the world to start building funds out of this shit. Retirement funds, college savings funds, Oh, the 401ks are the, look, that's what we really want. Fidelity is going to do that all around the world. Um, all kinds of funds, mutual funds, uh, whatever, whatever, passive, passive funds, active funds, whatever. We want that shit in the funds. We want our crypto in these funds because that takes them off of the market. Right? It takes off the market. When you open a 401k fund, well, that lasts forever. In other words, you have to buy the Bitcoin and the Ethereum to put it into that 401k, right? And then it just sits there and you just get customers to buy it, right? That's how 401k works, right? You get more people to buy it and that the asset, the underlying asset of the vehicle, of this 401k vehicle, yeah, they never go anywhere. They're off the market forever. Unless the fund goes insolvent, you're never going to see those Bitcoin and Ethereum again. So that's what we want, all right? Funds, funds, funds. So now the funds in Brazil can now invest in crypto because they did a full regulatory thing, uh, just like Europe just did, the MICA regs, markets in crypto assets regs. Yeah, crypto is fully legal in Europe right now as we speak, fully legal. Yeah, option swaps, whatever. Yeah, build, it's going to take a while to build a few investment vehicles for the stuff, for the masters to come because, you know, they use leveraged assets. They don't just buy Bitcoin and hold it. They, you know, buy a leveraged futures contract. <laughs> they go, uh, you know, I mean, we, we work on leverage. Masters, we work on leverage. The voodoo, we work on the voodoo. But um, that's what we want. This is what we want. And so, as you know, Brazil is the most populous country in South America. It is the biggest uh, economy in South America. Um, I know they just had that, those people tried to pull a, pull a Trump, uh, and, uh, storm the Capitol yesterday. Yeah. Well, unlike here in America, those cops down there don't fuck around <laughs> and they fucking arrested all bunch of there. Those guys are going to jail for fucking, well, we're, they're going to jail here too, though. But all right. Like here in America, those guys stormed the Capitol and then we let them go home and then we arrested them when they got home. Brazil doesn't play like that. They arrested them on the spot. Get down, you motherfucker. You're under arrest. But so that's over now. Okay, so let's check it out. Funds, people. Funds, funds, funds. It ain't the sexy shit. I know. I know. It ain't the sexy. But that's what your markets are made of. Funds. Just a fat fucker sitting at a, at a desk just making sure it doesn't go past a certain... Uh, you know, level or whatever, you know, like that. Okay, so let's check it out. Not a certain level. I'm trying to think of the word. Right, you know, the the bell curve thing, right? Uh, deviation, right? Standard deviation. As long as the fund stays within a certain standard of deviation, all right, it's good to go, right? So, okay. There you go. All right, so let's check it out on December 23rd. The Brazilian CBM, that's their version of the SEC, I guess. Uh, authorized crypto holding by investment funds. Bang! It is now 
Whoops. Sorry. Authorized. The authority has stated that financial institutions are permitted to participate in the cryptocurrency industry so long as they exercise due diligence in ensuring the security and ownership of their assets. A new regulatory framework signed into law by the outgoing president, Yair Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro, uh, the people who stormed the Capitol the other day, those are Bolsonaro supporters. Well, they're going to jail. Uh, Places conditions on approval. So on Thursday, the president of Brazil signed a bill regulating cryptocurrencies, creating a new crime of fraud involving virtual assets punishable by four to six years in prison and a fine. Companies dealing in digital assets, such as exchanges and trading uh, intermediaries, will be requested to obtain a virtual service provider license as established by the bill. Although the bill doesn't make cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin legal tender in Brazil, it includes various digital currencies within the, de- the definition of legal payment methods. Now, this is the sexy part here. Bolsonaro's new law permits investment funds to hurdle cryptocurrency assets only if they meet specific criteria. In other words, they're real. So like your VeChain, your Stellars, your IOTAs, yeah, they'll be able to hodl that because they're real companies making money. Uh, yeah. So anyway, by the new law, crypto assets can be included in a fund if traded through entities approved by the CVM. In other words, regulated assets. Brazil's central bank, or by a local supervisor in the case of operations in a different country. Anti-money laundering and anti-countering terrorism financing, financial terrorism, guidelines must be followed by the criteria. FATF compliance. If you don't know what that is, we are... Hold on one second. One second, one second. All right. So if you don't know what that is, FATF, F-A-T-F, is the Financial Action Task Force. Every country in the world is now under the Financial Action Task Force regime. And Financial Action Task Force is this. It's the anti-money laundering and the countering of finance terrorism, but also consumer protections, okay? Okay. Every country in the world has to do it. America is under FATF. Europe is under FATF. Even the Iranians, yes, are under FIDAP. They are compliant. Even them. Okay, so it's a serious, it's a serious business. Uh, Supervisors wanted to be legally competent and supervising each other. All right. So look, the CVM issued a market guidance opinion in the crypto sector in October, despite the delay in approving the new regulatory framework. Although cryptocurrencies aren't explicitly mentioned in the definition of a security, market participants are still expected to use the guidelines to determine whether or not a cryptocurrency constitutes a security. So, bye. So, there we go. The funds, the funds. That's what we need. That's what props up your stock market. It, the reason your stock market, Shamari, man, the stock market's going to crash. It's going to go to zero. It'll never go to zero. Fund masters hold it. The good shit, anyway. I mean, some will go to zero, but not the good shit. Not your Microsoft, not your Google, not your Teslas, not your Boeing, your Fords, your GMs. They ain't going to zero ever. Because they got too many of their shares in funds. Will these fund masters hodl? They're not weak hands. These fund masters, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck if it's a risk off or not. They're hodling. Right? I got a fund. I got a hodl list. <laughs> you can't sell the shit. You have to hodl it because it's in your fund. Right? You can't sell it on your clients. It's That's probably a crime of some sort. And so... Right, that's your market, funds, and that's what we want. We want, see, like this is the Dow Jones. I want to be able to say, guys, this is the crypto market, the sexy in and out of the traders. The crypto is held in funds. That's where we want this crypto held, in just boring ass vanilla funds. Strong hands holding it, taking them off the market, thus creating scarcity, thus driving up the price for the remainder of these that do stay on the market. Okay, so, bang, this is great news. Here come the Brazilian fund masters. Look, 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 bang. Let's move on. 
bang, Indonesia is also a natural crypto exchange. So, exactly. I, this is what I think we should all do. I think every country should. I tell you right now, I tell you, I think we should just fuck Coinbase, fuck Binance, fuck BitMEX, BitTrex, BitStamp, BitHum, all of them. Fucking ban all of them and just make national crypto exchanges. Right, like the NASDAQ. You want to buy tech stocks in America from America? Right, you got to buy from the NASDAQ, fucker. You know what I mean? That's the listing. That's the shit you want, right? That's what we should have. Fuck your little fucking exchange token and this and that. Fuck that. We should have national exchanges. Just like how we have the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ. If you want to buy a share of Ford, you got to buy it off the fucking Dow. That's it. That's it, fuckstick. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how it should be. You shouldn't be able to have all these fucking little crypto nerds with their own little exchanges getting hacked, fucking up. Or like FTX, using client money. Fuck that. All right, have you ever heard of the, the NASDAQ using client money <laughs> to invest in some hedge fund? Of course not. Right? Because it's regulated. It's, I don't even think they could. I don't even think you can do that. I don't even think that it would be possible. And so, right? Because it's not just in your control, motherfucker, right? You're just listing the shit. And that's the problem with these crypto things, right? If Sheng Penzao, CZ from Binance, decided, fuck it, let's just steal all these people's money. Well, not your keys, not your crypto. He could. He could take it all right now tonight if he feels like it. Uh, just like what FTX did. Uh, SMB or what the fuck's kid name? SFB. Wait, Sam Bankman Fried. SBF. That's what FBF did, right? You got all his money in this one kid's hand. Oh, fuck. He gets tempted. He dips his hand in the cookie jar. Gets away with it. Oh. Huh. He thinks, fuck it, I'll, I'll take two cookies this time. Gets away with it. Now he's like, fuck it, I'll just take this whole fucking jar, give it to my girl, <laughs> and fuck it all up for all of us. Anyway, I like national securities. I would like to see, sorry, a national exchange. I would like to see America come up with, like, literally, you know, just, uh, you know, the U.S. crypto exchange. You know, keep it simple, just, and fuck all these, you know, Binance and Coinbase and BitHum, BitMix, Bittrex, all this shit. All right, so Indonesia, though, they're listening to Shamari, and they're going to launch a national crypto exchange in 2023. <laughs> Bye. The platform comes as part of the plan to shift the regulatory oversight from the commodity agencies to the securities agencies. Exactly. I've told you all a hundred times. These are just securities. That's all this crypto shit is. Bitcoin and Ethereum are different. Because they're more like commodities. They're not controlled by a corporation. It's just there, like trees or air or water. And then this wannabe money shit over here. Ow. These guys are dreaming. And then, and then the real stuff we invest in, actual companies that have other companies employing them to use their block trade, right? Revenue generating companies, right? So, and, and as far as these revenue generating ones go, your VeChain, your IOTA, your Matic, your... You're a fucking stellar, your your singularity net. Yeah, these are companies, revenue generating, and those and these little tokens they have for the little blockchain are securities, as far as I'm concerned. Which they are. Come on, get real. So look, as part of its reform of crypto regulation, Indonesia will create a crypto exchange in 2023, according to the reports. The platform is planned to be launched prior to a shift of regulatory power from the commodities to the securities authority. So here in America, for instance, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the only two cryptos that are regulated because they're considered commodities here. So they're regulated by the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. The rest of these cryptos, they're all run by companies, right? Ripple, LLC. Matic, LLC. IOTA, well, IOTA's a, not actually a corporation, it's a... It's a nonprofit organization, but um, Singularity Net, LLC, Chainlink, LLC, they're companies. Yeah, so these little crypto things they're giving us that we're buying, they're just securities, right? Stocks in a company. So as part of its reform of crypto regulation, Indonesia will create a crypto, did we read this? Oh, right, so they moved it from the commodities exchange to their version of the SEC. 
which is true. Like the SEC, so the CFTC here in America should regulate Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're commodities. Whereas all the rest of these, well, not all of them, but the non-wannabe money shit, the real companies that actually make, you know, are viable and generating revenue and stuff, they should be regulated as securities. They're just stocks, nothing different. It's a company, it makes money, okay, it's a stock, it goes up in value. And then the wannabe money stuff, man, just do whatever you want with that shit. Privately issued money bullshit. All right, so on January 4th, the head of the Commodities Futures Trading Regulatory Agency of Indonesia, the the Baped, the Baped Dief, uh, did it, Nurjan Tungamok, Nurjat, Nordiat Moko stated that a crypto exchange should be set up this year. The move comes as part of a broader financial reform launched in December 2022. In accordance with the reform, in the next two years, the crypto oversight will be taken from Papepti, a commodities futures agency, by the Financial Services Authority. So from the commodities to the, you know, like here in America, from the CFTC to the SEC. The Financial Sector Development and Reinforcement Bill P2SK was ratified by the House of Representatives in Indonesia on December 15th. To be, so it became legislation, it became law to become the primary legal reference in the financial services sector. Explaining the shift of authority from Papepti to the FSA, cemented by the bill, Suminto Sastra Suito, a head of financing and risk management of the National Finance Ministry, claimed that in fact, crypto assets have become investment and financial instrument and financial instruments. So they need to be regulated on an equal basis with other financial investment interests. Exactly. Exactly. These are not special. There's nothing special about these little tokens that we buy. Nothing special. Right? They're just like stocks in a company. That's it. I mean, literally, literally. Hold on. Literally, it goes by the circulating supply. Here it is for Ethereum. Uh, times market price equals your market cap, capitalization, your market cap. Yeah, like stocks. These are all just stocks, people. I mean, like I said, Bitcoin and Ethereum are different. They're not controlled by a corporation, so you can't call them stocks, but all the rest of the shit, their stocks are this kind of wannabe money shit. Uh, privately issued money, which is nothing new. Nothing fucking new. So, except it's on a cute little blockchain now. All right, so he's saying they need to be on an equal base. Exactly. Don't treat them any worse. Don't treat them any better. Just plug them into the system, dog. Plug them in. All right. Uh, stay safe in Web3, learn more. Wait. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's an advertisement. All right, so let's go down here. Uh, Indonesia imposed a blanket ban on crypto payments starting in 2017. While trading in digital assets has largely remained legal in the country, has largely remained legal in the country. In the first days of January, Nurdiak Tomoko revealed that the value of crypto transactions of the country fell by half in 2022. Obviously, the world won't risk off. From, from 859.4 trillion Indonesian rupees, which is only $55 million, settle down, <laughs> to 296 to $19 million. In December, Bank of Egypt, the governor, Perry Wargio, announced the release of the concept of a design of a digital rupiah. So their version of a CBDC, a uh, currency with the equivalent country fiat, blah, 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 which will be made available for public discussion. All right. So bang, a national exchange, a national exchange, right? Just like the NASDAQ, just like the Dow, but like the NASDAQ and the Dow, you do know they are private companies, right? They're not controlled by the American government in any way, but they are quasi, it's called quasi, um, Shit, what do you call that? Right? They're not actual institutions of the American government, but they're quasi 
government entities. Do you understand? If that makes sense. You know, like the NASDAQ is owned by people, like just regular investors, right? The Dow Jones is just a company owned by investors. But because they list all the shit, all the stocks and shares and different stuff for our country, they're semi-governmental. You know what I mean? They, I mean, they can do what they want, but, you know, they're controlled by our government as well. So it's, that's why it's called quasi, quasi um, uh, regulated, not regulated, sorry, quasi governmental entities. All right, let's move on anyway. And that's what we want. That's what we want. I mean, that's my dream. Fuck Coinbase and all that. Fucking I want it. Just throw it on the NASDAQ and let's rip. All right, so that's it. Bang, let's get the shout outs. Oops, there we go. Universal was, oh wait, hold on. Let's start at the top. Look, new follower, Blockmaster. Block Trading Crypto News. Love everybody to see you with Barn. Oh, look at you, Banks. Looking dapper as always, brother. Love everybody to see you with Barn. All right, so some of this is Ukraine war stuff. Ukraine war, Ukraine war. Oh, there's the brothers. Airdrop, you son of a bitch. Ho, ho, bye. Ho, ho, bye. Ho, ho, bye. Got you wrong, Hurt. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Got you again, Ron Kaz. Nice try, fuckstick. Look. Good news out of China, though, huh? This shit's happening faster than I thought. Honestly, I thought January and February... We were just going to hear of carnage. People fucking dropping and dying in the streets. <laughs> of course not. They'll die in the hospital. But I thought it was going to be bad. But uh, it looks like this thing's almost... It looks like it peaked in December. I just read it to you. And they're waiting for uh, later this month um, for the Chinese New Year where people are going to get together. And so we should have another wave of it. But after that... That's over, so this is looking great. I mean, we can get out of this inflation shit, fuck, real soon. So, like I said, my my thing is, as long as it's over by the end of Q1, early Q2, great. So, we're on a good way, brother. You know that already. You're already a monster. You're already a killer. So, boom. Just felt like talking to you for a second. <laughs> All right, Universal Misanthrope. Look, look. The head of security for CB News. And the grill master. Of Noah Fast. And look, bang, holding down our insurgency in Central Europe. And he's got the chicken, bang, universal visit the rope. Love you, brother, see you, brother. Bang. b b b b b b b Yes, this is our girl. Uh, she's, a, she's trading crypto futures, I believe. I believe she's rocking some future stuff. So, you know me, I love a good trader. Look, sweetie, and go get, go get some of her art. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Bang. Technically bullish. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Gosh. All right, that's some more. What, what's he saying? Chainlink to the rescue? Hold on. You have $1,000. What crypto are you buying? Oh, so I answered. Oh, I said any revenue generating company. <laughs> he said Chainlink debt. Dagon, right, bullish. Of course, Dagon, bullish, Dagon. You know better. You know. Let everybody see with the bar. You get a two piece chicken to bang tonight. Oh, hey, here's the master criminal. Look at him. He's the master. Him and his boys digging under, digging under the bank. Get up into the vault. Safety deposit boxes. Doing fucking $45 million jobs, and he hasn't even invited me on any. This motherfucker's been watching this show for four years, pulling job after job worldwide. All right? Banks in India, banks in South Africa, banks in Brazil, banks in America. Doesn't invite a brother on a job. Look, brother, I can carry a sack of money, too. Tag on, brother. <laughs> Dino. That's how we be. Yeah, like... He's like a, you know, like a, like, <laughs> right, you know, like Mission Impossible, the first one with Tom Cruise? Yeah, fucking come right out of the ventilation shaft. I remember Tom Cruise, I'd be like, all right, 
because he couldn't touch the ground to bypass the security systems. That's what this guy does. Yeah, he bypasses them, hacks them, bypasses them. I don't think it's the loot. Goes on a lot of jobs, but doesn't invite his brother Shamar at all. Well, as long as when you come to Noah Fest. Well, anyway, brother. Love your and he made up the word Noah Fest, actually. So, love your brother. See you, brother. Thief master. Bang! He's the thief master. Oh, yeah. That's how he does it. That's how he does it. Yeah, he climbs up through the, the bottom of the floor. <laughs> Into the vault. That's how he be. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> Where is everyone? Where are you motherfuckers? Who's this? Oh, see, there's Dino. See, that's him right there. He said, I'm crazy. <laughs> Hold on. Where'd he go? There he is. See, that's him. That's him. All right. Yeah, look at him. He's in the vault. Like he's got the money. Yeah, well, right? The guy's sitting there showing me all the money. Yeah, well, invite me on the job, dick. Yeah, if you got to take, if the next job's got a take of over 30 million, well, invite me. Look, 10%. That's all I need. I'm not greedy. I can carry bags of money, dog. I'm healthy. Look at me. I'm healthy. I can carry bags of money. Come on, Dino. That's my resume for Dino. Look, I'm healthy. I can carry bags. Come on, brother. <laughs> Love you, brother. See you, brother. Look, he gets in there, piece of chicken. Bang! All right, look at him. That's how he does it. Yeah, look at him. He's, he's showing off. Look at him showing off there. Look at the piles of money. Like, see this pile right here? I could carry that, Dino. I can carry that. Look, I, I, I'm strong, brother. I'm strong. I know I'm looking thin. When I'm not drinking, I can carry. Let's go. I'll be sober for the mission. Victor! Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye! He is the chicken. Yeah. You know, there was a bunch of you somewhere else. Oh, Merrimatic! Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! He's got followers, man. So if you're a Matic Masta, if you're a Matic Hodler, go go and uh, subscribe, follow the mayor of Matic. Yeah, he's a Matic Masta. <laughs> All right, DP Entertainment. So, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Look, look. Bang! You know what that means. Bang! Who's this guy? OG Wisdom, Christian, Voice for Youth, Justice, and Equality. Mentor Life, OG Wisdom, Shrinky Circle. Oh, all right, brother. Look, look. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, I see your V-chain symbol. Yes, that is some OG Wisdom. You do have some OG Wisdom. Right. Game recognizes game, brother. OG Wisdom, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Welcome to the family. Look, crazy Edwin. <laughs> Edwin, the official mascot of CB News. And the original. He is the original. Oh, yeah. You want to sell some babies? He'll show you where. Oh, well. We'll talk about that another time. Edwin Koval, the original of, uh, mascot of CB News. Well, the original just viewer of this whole thing. And look at him. He's got his V-chain. Representing strong. Edwin, as always, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, she's a property master. Benny, I'm connecting the dots. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yeah, been well. Benny always knows what's going on. You can't get away from that motherfucker. He knows. He'll forget you. Look, look, Andrew Richetta, the enforcer. Not much to enforce now, is there? Prices are going up a little bit. We're above 17000 here. Right, he gets to rest the hand for a little while. Fuck, right? <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> Settle down. Takes wear and tear on a man's hand. <laughs> That's how much love. That's how much love he has for people. He's willing to sacrifice his own body. <laughs> to, to get your mind right. <laughs> Settle down. Ow. Settle down, sir. So, look, Andrew. Ice down the hand. So I think we're going up from now on for a little bit here. We should be good to go. Shouldn't have too many weak hands anymore for a minute. 
So, and he'll tell you right to your face. <laughs> Huddle. This juice is worth a squeeze, Fox Tech. <gasps> Sorry, Mr. Potato. You dang all right you are. <laughs> Settle down. All right, Andrew. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! The hardest working man in crypto news land. In CB News. Hardest working man of the CB News posse. Look, look, Radster. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Holding down the insurgency in Eastern Europe. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye! And look at the fucking Bengals. They made it to the playoffs. Shit. All right, baby. I'm excited. Bang! Grutzable, Grutzable. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Iota Master. Bang! He's got the chicken. All right, that's every. Uh oh, I see Kong right here. Look, look. <laughs> Love you, Kong. See you, Kong. Bang! No piggy wiggy, Kong. Yeah. Starving us of the piggy wiggy. Uh oh, he brought us something, though. No, no, no. It's not my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, Kong. Of course. Of course you did. Of course. All right, settle down, brothers. Fuel up and focus. On the chicken ahead. Exactly. It's time for the chicken ahead. This is it, man. This China thing. I mean, I thought when they opened. I mean, I told you. Guys, for January, February, just fucking. Just, <laughs> just wait to hear, you know, Edwin level, Mad Max level death and destruction in China from the COVID, right? Turns out it's not even turning out that bad. You know, I always like to plan for the worst. I always like to expect the best, but I plan for the worst. You know what I mean? Like, I always go worst case scenario. So that way, if something's better than what I think, well, great. Right? You know, there's a lot of people in the world, they always plan for the best. And then it doesn't turn out, and so they're always sad. So I always plan for the worst. And if the worst happens, I'm like, okay, well, that's what I planned for. But usually it never ends up being the worst, and so there's always something better. So I'm always like, yay. And so uh, that's the China situation, guys. Uh, like I said, I was waiting until the end of Q1, early Q2 to, for any signs of hope. We might get it out of this thing in Q1 already, so. All right, Bitcoin Kong. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, wait, we didn't even do the, wait. Shit, hold on. There we go, fucking. Look, look. Bang, <laughs> bang, <laughs> bang. Iota and Dell to promote carbon tracking. Bang. Brazilian funds can now invest in crypto. Bang. And Indonesia will offer a national crypto exchange. Bang, <laughs> bang, <laughs> bang. Yes, Kong. Look at Kong dancing. <laughs> he's, he's like, look, you know you want the chicken. You know you want that daggone chicken. Look, look. Yes, Kong. Tell them. Tell them about the chicken they love. There's the mayor again. <laughs> All right, that's everybody. All right, that's everyone. Let's get back to the Death Star. Yeah, let's get back to the Death Star. So. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. All right. Well, so we had a great show for you today. Of course we did. You're welcome. All right. So let's just get to it and wrap this puppy up. IOTA and Dell to promote carbon tracking. You know how important this carbon thing is with, uh, you know, the global warming, the climate change and all this. Uh, and, uh, you know, so like I told you, this carbon thing has been around since the late 90s. Bill Clinton put it in, right? Carbon credits, carbon credits. And so, but a lot of people cheat. They don't buy as much credits as you're supposed to. They're, they're polluting this much but they're buying only this much carbon credits. Yeah, well, with IOTA fuck stick, you're not gonna be able to cheat the system anymore. You're gonna have to buy, you pollute this much, we're gonna have to buy this much. And so uh, that's great, you know, if you're an environmentalist or something. Well, not an environmentalist, just a human. You want clean air, right? We want fucking clean air and shit, don't we? So, no. So look, and so for IOTA hodlers, buying. And again, as usual, you know how I roll. Fortune 500 onboardings or government contracts. And well, Dell, you all know that name. And so that fits the criteria. If you have IOTA in your portfolio, I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but I mean, I'm an IOTA holder, but you know, don't be afraid to accumulate a little more. 
I wouldn't be. And I'll tell people what to do with this money, with their money. This is not financial advice. This is strictly the opinions of the presenter. All right. So on that note, I ought to hodlers. Bye. And then Brazilian funds can now invest in crypto. So that's the juice. That's the chicken. That is the ultimate. That's what markets are made of. And all the sexy shit you see on Bloomberg and CNBC and in the movies, Wolf of Wall Street and, and all that shit. Yeah, those are the sexy little, this, this part. Yeah, this is your market. The boring funds. All of you with your 401ks, bang. All of you with your retirement funds, well, in a 401k is a type of retirement fund, but you can also buy an IRA, which is a different type of retirement fund. Bang. All of you with your kids' college savings funds, bang. All of you with your mutual fund, bang. All of you with your passively managed fund, bang. All of you with your actively managed fund, bang. That's all this. All this. The 500 down, 300 down, 500 up, 300 up. That's this little piece here. That's the sexy you hear about every day. Yeah, but it's just a boring underbelly, believe me. <laughs> it's just fuckers with funds with all these assets shoved and stuffed in them and hodling, hodling those funds. And so this is amazing. And so that's what we need in the crypto world. We need fund masters to start buying this shit, taking them off the market, stacking it in funds and selling it to soccer mom and dad. Well, let's get real about it. That's, that's the ultimate. That's what we need. We need Fidelity to come over here and start offering Crypto in the 401ks to Americans. Bad! Oh, <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. Oh, and then, and then right now we have the Europeans. They just came online with their mica regs. I guarantee you this first quarter, you're just going to hear fund after fund after fund offering crypto in European 401ks now. You'll see. I think I'm fucking playing games. You'll see. By March... Or sorry, by April, let's 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 let Q1 go by, because it takes time to build the investment vehicles. You just don't. It's not one day. You got to build it right. Hire the staff to run it and all that. But by Q Q2 next year, watch all the shit we're talking about coming out of Europe. Options, fucking swaps, fuck everything, everything, all the funds you can imagine. So guys, crypto. We're finally hitting the big time. Well, we're in the big time now. Here come the Europe did it. So that's it. And I, and I want to give you another thing is that, you know, now that Europe has come online, well, you know, other countries that were thinking about it, but like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, well, now they know. The Europeans are in. That means the Americans are coming. Well, we better get in first. Well, not first. You already missed it, but to be first, but we better get in. Right, remember that thing we read the other day? What was it? What was that? Hold on one second. Right, right. Remember the, the story we read about Nigeria to recognize Bitcoin and crypto, right? And what did the guy, what did the Nigerian SEC guy said, or the politician or whatever? He said, well, we want to conform to market practices, right, to the new practices. Once the European Union came out with their regs, that opened up all these smaller countries to come out, right? Like if I'm Kenya, if I'm Nigeria, if I'm, you know, whoever, Singapore and stuff, I might like crypto, but I'm not going to build a whole industry around it or let the industry thrive in my country because, well, maybe the, the Europeans won't do it. Maybe the Americans won't do it. So they kind of wait. Maybe the British won't do it. Maybe the Japanese won't do it. Right. And so they kind of wait to see, you know, what the big dogs do. And so once Europe came out with the mica regs, everyone was like, all right, looks like we're into crypto. Right. If the Europeans are in, we're in. And like I have told you, it's a copycat world. Like. So if I'm Kenya, I'm Brazil, I'm. Whatever, Indonesia. Oh, well, I just copy what fucking Europe did and say, OK, well, these are our regs, too. <laughs> right? Like I said, you might tweak the, um, you know, how much taxes someone has to pay or what the re re reporting requirements are, what the insurance on the custody is or something. But the basic framework, you just follow that and that's it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> yeah, they've already invented it for you. And so 
That's what's great. That's what's great. And so, uh, yeah, Micah regs, baby. And so, and like I told you, the regs, well, that's what's going to bring us the chicken. That's what's going to bring us the chicken. Look, if you're new to this channel, let me tell you something about life. Sometimes in life, you get the chicken. Sometimes you only get the feathers. Don't worry. You're invested in crypto. Huddle. This juice is worth a squeeze, and I guarantee you, this market here, it's going to serve you up the chicken. Nice. Nice. Just invest in revenue generating product, of course. You can invest in dog shit, but as long as you're invested in revenue generating product, and the more the merrier, ah, this market's going to serve you the chicken <laughs> hard. All right? Hard. So, all right, brothers. Bye. And then finally, Indonesia National Crypto Exchange. And so, yeah, like, that's what I think should happen. Uh, just someone come out with a national one, a NASDAQ of it, a DAO of it. Done fuck Coinbase, fuck BitMEX, BitTrack, BitHump, all that crap. FTX, all that shit. Fuck all those guys. Just come up with one national exchange, and then you have other companies offering you the investment vehicles. You see, that's what Coinbase, Binance, FTX and all that are doing is that they're offering you the chicken. In other words, you can buy it, but then they're offering you the trading stuff inside. Stake it here, trade it here, do all this, do all that, right? The NASDAQ just lists stocks, right? And then say your, your TD Ameritrade account interfaces with it and allows you to buy those stocks from the NASDAQ, right? So in other words, third party companies allow you the interface into that market. And that's what the crypto boys are doing. They're being very greedy. They said, fuck this. I'm going to make the market. I'm going to make the token. I'm going to have all the trading and all this earning and all this on my own platform, right? They're being greedy. They're taking it all. Yeah, well, we saw what happens when you, when you allow all that power and all that shit in one guy's hands. FTX, SBF. All right, uh, that kid's going to prison forever. And so, but... Yeah, he may be going to prison forever, but yeah, think of all the people who lost their life fucking savings because of that fucker, right? And uh, that's that's the that's the bitch. That's 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 the rub. Uh, that's where the rub lies, right? A lot of people lost their money, and so when you just make it a national exchange, well, no one loses their money from buying something on the Nasdaq, unless you went long when it went short, or you went short when it went long. It's your fault, but you're never gonna get robbed. The NASDAQ is never just going to rob you of money. It can't. It just lists assets. And then it collects its fees from those listings. And that's how crypto should be. There should be a national crypto exchange. Each crypto company just pays their fees to be listed. Well, if they're compliant with blah, blah, blah. Because the NASDAQ does check if they're compliant. It's not you just pay and you get to be on the NASDAQ. You have to be you know, certified by the SEC, but once your certification happens, all right, you're listed. All right, and you're on the Bloomberg terminal now. Well, that's the key. Once you're on the Bloomberg terminal, that's the listing you want to be on. Fuck, fuck Coinbase. <laughs> hey, man, Shamari, blah, 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 is on Coinbase. I don't give a fuck. When it gets on Bloomberg, talk to me. And so that's uh, the level that I'd like to see uh, I want to see everything on the Bloomberg terminal and on a separate national exchange, if possible. Uh, take it out of the hands of these these young little crypto boys and put it in the hands of the pros. All right, and so that's it. So that's our show. So look, on that happy note, let's chill it and kill it. But let's get you back to your wives and lives. So look. Oh, and so sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, let, let's slow down. About the Indonesia, let me finish with Indonesia. And so that's what's going to happen in Indonesia. If I'm an Indonesian citizen, I'm not going to have to buy off of Binance anymore. I'm not going to have to buy off of Coinbase or Bithum, Bitmex, Bittrex, whatever. Yeah, I'm just going to buy off of my you know, crypto NASDAQ Indonesia through my bank account or whatever, right? And I'm never going to get rugged. I'm never going to get robbed. I'm never going to have some little... Adderall infused kid giving my money to his girlfriend to do quant trades with. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're safe. You're safe like that. Plus, it's insured. And so, all right, that's what I meant to say. 
And in fact, what Indonesia is about to get is what Europe is about to get. Well, well, I don't know if Europe is going to do a national exchange, but I just mean the safety, the safety part. All right. So there we go. So now, bang, on that happy note, let's shill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Look, subscribe below, press the bell. You'll get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. <laughs> In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamar Clark, and I love talking money. Bang! And I love talking crypto. Bang! This is the favorite time of my day. So thank you for having me in your home, and I'll see you all next time for another fun fact, fact-filled day of crypto talk. But until then, subscribe here and press the bell. Watch that video there and get your mind right. And I'll see you next time. Sunny B, spy lady, love you lady. This show was dedicated to you. And for the rest of you fuckers, my name's Shamari Clark. I always watch it on money and I'm always on duty. You're welcome. Bye. Over and out.